Ramsey Every Show is the Truth Commission. This is the Rusty Humphrey Show. Hi, right, welcome back. It is the Rusty Humphrey Show. The phone number here, 1-800-449-TALK. Matthew Vadim is here. He is a senior editor at Capital Research Center. It is a think tank. It studies left-wing advocacy groups and their funders. Subversion, Inc., it's his first book. It is the culmination of year, nearly three years of research and hundreds of interviews. Matthew, welcome to the Rusty Humphrey Show, sir. How are you doing? Great. Great. Um, thanks for having me on. It's a great honor to be on your yeah. show, Rusty. I sure appreciate it. Now, aren't there aren't that many left-wing advocacy groups that we have to worry about, are there? Oh, there's thousands of them. Yeah. It's, it's They keep us in business. Without <laughs> them, we'd have no reason to be around. Well, tell me. I mean, like, like okay, we've heard uh, Media Matters, right? That's a big one. Right. Well, there are local ones as well. Like, there's too many to even count. But, yeah, they're absolutely. National Council of La Raza, uh, MECA, the, the Mexican-American... Uh, uh, then, then MALDEF, Mexican American Legal Defense Fund, that's left wing. Mm-hmm. So is MECA. Uh, so is the NAACP and the NAAC voter, the NAACP Voter Fund, Planned Parenthood, and all of its affiliates. Mm. Uh, now the good news is it is that goes on and on and on. Right. I could keep going. Now the good news is is that like that Acorn's gone, so we don't have to worry about them anymore, right? Well, they're, but they're not exactly gone. What they've done is they're simply uh, changing their structure so that they can stay. In business, the 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 parent corporation, a shell corporation based now in Brooklyn, filed for Chapter Seven bankruptcy on Election Day, 2010. They figured, my guess is, they figured that with all the news on Election Day, people aren't going to be paying too much attention to Acorn, so that was right. a good time to bow out. So that's you know dissolving. Uh, uh, but what they did is a year before that. Acorn instructed its state chapters to start incorporating themselves under brand new names that don't contain the word Acorn. Hmm. So in Texas, for example, Texas Acorn became a group called Texas Organizing Project. It, it's, it's the same same people. I'm not sure if they're in the same office, but in most of the places, the state chapters where they did this, they're in the same office. Like in California, California Acorn became Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. They operate with the same staff, uh, same people in charge, same office on, on Grand Avenue in Los Angeles. They did it in New York. New York Acorn became New York Communities for Change. In Massachusetts, it's New England United for Justice. Here in D.C. and Maryland, it's called Communities United. Uh, you know, they did it in Minnesota. They, they have two of them in Pennsylvania hmm. and one of them in, uh, in Washington State. Are they getting any money? Oh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Because Obama said it, because Congress said they're not giving them any more money. Remember that? Yeah, they did say that, but there, there, there's a problem here. Um, well, we we know, I know that uh, that all the branches of of um, uh, Acorn Housing, which changed its name but is the same legal entity, it's now called Affordable Housing Corporations of America, yeah. all of them applied for these things called DUNS numbers, D-U-N-S, and that's a, that's a classification, I'll, I'll skip all the bureaucratic gobbledygook, okay. but you need to have one of these numbers in order to apply for a federal grant. It's required by the, the President's Office of Management and Budget, and has been since 2003. All of these chapters of Acorn Housing, with the new name, have these, and about half of the new state chapters uh, with, with, that don't have Acorn in their name have gotten these already. Uh, and the funds are starting to flow. Uh, the first sign was that in March, HUD gave Acorn Housing, which is now called Affordable Housing Centers of America, $80,000. Uh, out of the fiscal 2010 appropriations. Uh, this is a problem because Congress banned funding of ACORN uh, back in the fall of 2009. Hmm. Uh, late 2009, they said you can't fund ACORN or its affiliates with funds appropriated from fiscal year 2010 and from all previous years. That's right. pretty specific. Okay. Then what they did is... Um, Okay, that the HUD grant was in March, but in January they 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 stopped a grant. They canceled one for four hundred and sixty thousand. Okay, it went through in their database, but then the same day it was rescinded for four hundred and sixty thousand for for affordable housing centers of America. Okay, and. They gave the reason it, it, it's because they were obeying the congressional ban on, 
giving money from fiscal 2010 and earlier. And that money came out of, I think it was fiscal 2005 or 2006. So it was, they recognized it was illegal in January to give ACORN money, and then suddenly in March, it's not illegal to give ACORN money. So what happened between January and March? My guess is that they figured out that uh, people weren't paying attention to ACORN anymore and that the coast was clear and it was time to start funding them again. And that works? Well, yeah, they got the money. They got the seventy nine, the $80,000. The Affordable Housing Centers of America in Miami, Florida, uh, is getting the money. That's according amazing to a me. HUD press release that uh, uh, another watchdog group uh, in D.C. called Judicial Watch discovered. And they're getting that money, absolutely. Um, now, there's also other money uh, in uh, Texas. Uh, I was able to track... I was able to track down another – this is not a grant. This is called a sub-grant. Okay. So what they do is they gave uh, a grant to, I think it was the Texas Housing Finance Agency, of about $600,000 for HUD uh, – out of – not HUD, but out of federal mortgage counseling okay. funds to help people vote for closure, et cetera. And then – the Texas Housing Finance Agency put out a press release a couple of days ago saying that the Texas branch, San Antonio, Texas branch of Affordable Housing Centers of America, a.k.a. Acorn Housing, was getting part of that $600,000. So this is a backdoor way. You can't blame that on, on Obama and HUD, the, the one in Texas. But this is a backdoor way that, that Acorn operates to get its hands on your money. Well, how can you not blame them? Do you don't think they, I mean, are they, they don't know this is going on? Acorn, absolutely. This is planned. But I mean, Obama. Obama does know this is going on? Well, Obama must know. Obama or uh, has got to know the, about the HUD grant, the mm-hmm. $80,000. Absolutely. These, these are his friends. He wants to reward them uh, for all their, you know, all they've done for him. They right. helped get him elected. And, and, that, and that's, that's the Mary thing. Poppins and, and uh, <laughs> with Mary Poppins and Goofy and Mickey Mouse all on the voter rolls. Exactly. Uh, Matthew Vadim here. Is, is that I'm pronouncing that right, Vadim? Vadim. Vadim. Matthew Vadim is here on the Rusty Humphrey Show. Um, what, what is the biggest surprise when you wrote this book, Subversion, Inc., and you did all this research and looked into ballot box stuffers and gangsters and all these things? What was your biggest surprise as you look investigating? My biggest surprise was how tolerant they were of violence. The founder of Acorn is, a, is this character named Wade Rathke. Yes. He lives in New Orleans. And he is on the record as saying that he's in favor of, of tree spiking, which is a kind of echo sabotage. You drive a spike into a tree. The environmentalist uh, wackos do it. They drive a, strike, a spike into a tree. Then the lumberjack comes along with a chainsaw, cuts down the tree, and then the tree, you know, the, it explodes. The, the chainsaw, you know, br- breaks apart and kills him right. or maims him. And he said, why can't we have more of these techniques of sabotage? Why can't we have a few? computer hackers go out and help the labor movement it would be such a you know a a better way for us to use our resources and he's on record he wrote that in an essay and uh, in the acorn magazine called social policy review i think it was in 2001 he praised the riots in seattle in 1999 during the the world trade organization meeting there he thought they were fantastic he also a lot of people don't know this. There was a terrorist plot to kill people at the Republican convention in Minnesota in 2008. You're kidding. <laughs> Even people like you who are up on this kind I of thing no don't idea. know this because no. it got almost zero coverage at the time. Um, what happened is while Sarah Palin and Rudy Giuliani were making fun of community organizers, community organizers had prepared Molotov cocktails with materials bought from Walmart. What? Yeah, Walmart, and they added gasoline. They made the Molotov cocktails uh, that you make them with gasoline, and then you put oil in because the oil ensures that when the when the bomb hits its target, it sticks to the target and causes more damage. That's the idea. Anyway, uh, they were tipped off by a former um, far left community organizer who had a change of heart uh, and decided that that he loved his country and didn't want to didn't want to uh, attack it anymore. Oh my gosh. Turned in these two anarchist terrorists, and they were um, uh, they were uh, they were arrested by the FBI, and they were put on trial, and they were sentenced to prison. 
Well, that's good. Absolutely. And, and then the left, of course, loves this kind of thing because it's so romantic and radical and exciting for them. And uh, uh, the, the kids' names, they're young guys, McKay and Crowder. Uh, one of them, I think, is out of prison now, and the other one who couldn't cut a, uh, uh, a deal with the prosecutor, he's still in there. Uh, and they... Um, uh, uh, the left made a movie about them called Better This World. Uh, it's a better which is world? about how, you know, they were set up supposedly by the community uh, organizer who turned them in, a guy named Brandon Darby. And, uh, you know, it's all just uh, the usual crap that, yeah. that you might expect from Hollywood. It, it's amazing how all these leftists that cause all these trouble, every one of them set up. Nobody ever done nothing. They just, uh, they're just victims. It's, it, it was probably Walmart that did it to them. <laughs> yeah, they're probably that's right. They were forced to go into Walmart and to buy the material, that's including right. the ladies' tampons that they used, they intended to use as wicks. Nice on the bomb. Would that so, have worked? Yeah, that would have been bad PR for the feminine hygiene industry. I, I, I guess. guess the name of the book is Subversion Inc. Uh, Matthew, do you have a website you'd like people to check out? Sure, absolutely. My website is Matthew with two T's, Vadum V A D U M dot com, uh, and I, there's also a Facebook page for the book, and you just go to Subversion Inc. dot com, and it'll redirect you to it. So his, Subversion Inc. dot com. His name Matthew Vadum. It's always it's a pleasure meeting you, and hopefully you'll come back on the show. Thank I, you so I'm, much. Happy to come on anytime. I can talk about this until you don't want to listen anymore. <laughs> Matthew Vadim is his name. Uh, we'll take a quick one to be right back, right here on the Rusty Humphrey Show. <laughs> Stop the lies. Stop the corruption. This is the Rusty Humphrey Show. 